Welcome to Tech Flow. We cover the biggest technology trends impacting our lives. My name is Kelly Boss. Now, talking about impacting our lives, immobility, because this is about protecting our environment. And today we are at Kiri EV. We are talking how two wheelers will lead the charge towards green mobility. And some of the things that we are going to talk about and uh, you can read this also on our paper today, on our pullout, on the enterprise pullout. We are talking about how it will be easier for two-wheelers to lead the charge. We are, not we are not saying cars will not come. Cars will come. It will be a little bit slower because of infrastructure. But for two-wheelers, there are solutions. On today's episode, uh, the CEO of Kiri EV, Mr. Christopher Mara, will be preempting some of this. Uh, we'll, we'll have this conversation on how uh, maybe perhaps uh, the problem of infrastructure can be solved through battery swapping and other solutions. Another thing we'll be talking about is, we all know, uh, or uh, if not, is 1.5 million bikers in Kenya, especially the border borders. And most of these bikes on the road you see are mostly new. So in this space particularly, um, versus the cars where it's always fresh off the boat, but it's not a new car. It's usually a used car outside Kenya. But this is a space where people buy new stuff, and that's why the charge towards immobility will be led by two wheelers. Welcome to Tech File. Enjoy the show. So this is this is a portable charger, we're saying, um, which you can just plug into any normal socket. Um, and the battery is full. It will show you that it's at 100%. 100% here. Um, like that. And then you just come, you can plug it, and you take it to the bike. So. As you can see, just connect. Once it's connected, as you can see, this has space for another battery, or you can use this as a storage space. Uh, my name is Chris Mara, I'm the founder of Kiri EV, and we are an electromobility company that's been running for the last three years. We're based here in Nairobi, Kenya, particularly on Kiambu Road and Ridges Springs. Um, this is where we have our headquarters, our offices, and we also have our, our workshop here. Um, this facility is where we do a lot of our R&D, um, product development, testing, um, and just bringing it all together. For the last three years, um, you know, we, we've brought in a couple of bikes, uh, we've tested them, we've reiterated, it reiterated the versions that we brought. So now on, on like our version three of the bike. What we found is a lot of guys who want the bike, uh, riders out there, companies, and they're very interested. But the main challenge and the first question you always get is, where do I charge the bike? Uh, and, and for us, so we've come up with several solutions. The first one is we give you a charger. The same way when you buy your phone, you get a charger. Except nowadays the new phones don't come with those, but, uh, but we do that. We give you a portable charger where you can go and charge anywhere. The battery, one, you can remove it from the bike, so you can remove it, take it into the house and charge. But you can also, it also has a charging port in the bike. So you don't have, if you have a socket outside or an extension, you can also charge it outside. So that's option one. And that's the easiest option because it gives you the freedom to move around anywhere. So anywhere you go, you have the charger, you can charge. Option two is we're setting up uh, charging points. So these are public charging points like in malls, in shopping centers, and you come and you park your bike and you plug in with your charger, and then you're paid to charge uh, for that, for the, for the amount of time that you're there for. Then the third option is battery swapping. So we're setting up uh, battery swapping stations. And this is where you come and within five minutes you, you give us your depleted battery, we give you a fully charged one, you pay a fee and you go. So this is the same as petrol, you know, the same way you go and walk into a petrol station, two minutes they fill your tank and you go. When you look at electric mobility and you look at which sector will electrify the fastest, um, 
Motorcycles will be the fastest. Motorcycles, tuk-tuks, and then you're looking at commercial vehicles. Why motorcycles will be the fastest? First of all, this sector has, like you said, 1.5 plus million motorcycles on Kenyan roads, growing at about 20 to 25,000 units per month. Uh, motorcycles are also the only category where 90% of the vehicles are bought new, zero mileage from showroom. When you talk about new cars, we're usually talking about new second-hand, <laughs> you know, the, they haven't been used by anyone in the country. But with motorcycles, it's brand new, zero mileage. And because the price difference between electric and petrol is not that that great, we, we see that this is where people will have to cry the fastest because also the savings they're making and because the, the vehicle is not so different from what they're currently used to. So this bike is very simple. Um, as you can see, instead of an engine, here we have the battery. Um, space for two batteries so that, uh, so one battery will get you about 70 kilometers on a full charge. Uh, full charge costs two units of electricity when you're charging at home. So with two batteries, you're getting up to 140 kilometers. Um, because there are less moving parts, this is very easy to maintain and take care of. Uh, so right now, uh, no engine, so you don't have any of those uh, air filters, engine oil, spark plugs, you know, all you have to do is maintain the battery. Two, uh, the, other, the only other main thing you're maintaining is the brake fluid. Um, this disc brakes need to be changed, uh, so brake fluid is topped up here and then you change the disc pads, uh, this is changed about every 2,000 kilometers. When you compare all of these costs versus uh, petrol, so a petrol bike, so when you look at uh, charging a battery, so when you charge at home, it's 50 shillings, 50 shillings to charge a battery. 50 shillings will get you 70 kilometers. Compare this to a litre of petrol, which costs 130 shillings. Actually, now it's gone up to 100 and, about 169. And that will get you about 30 kilometers. So you're getting you know, almost three times uh, for, off uh, an electric battery than, than you are getting from a petrol. Here, here is where we, so like I said, we, we are, we're working to design, to redesign some of these parts locally. So here you can see this is where we've worked to redesign uh, the wire harness. Uh, these are some of the versions of the wire harness that we have uh, developed. Uh, a lot of this is cutting up, splicing, um, and really working to make sure what is coming out. So like here we've laid out, we've basically laid out what the battery is like. So this is where the battery will be. This is the back, back of the bike, that's the front of the bike. And we basically laid out and we built our harness here. For us, we want to establish ourselves as one of the leading players within this space, um, bringing a quality product that, um, that the market wants, you know. Uh, for us, we, we, we've, we've built our product around what the market wants rather than what we think it wants. That's why it's, we've taken some time to go and research and get feedback from the clients and then slowly build up on that product that way. Um, for us, we wanna see, we wanna bring a lot of that production here locally. So right now, um, we started off, you know, the first bike we, we brought was completely knocked down kit imported from China and India. But as we progress over the last three years, we're slowly increasing the local content. Right now, I'd say we're at about 30%. I think we can get to about 60% and in the next five years, we want to bring this to at least 90%. This one will create local jobs. Uh, and you know, with, you know, with local jobs also comes the, the local supporting industry. So if we're doing frames, someone else is going to be like, you know what, this guy's producing enough, I can now manufacture tires. Someone else will be like, you know what, I, I'm already doing the, the wires, so there's be more increase. So there'll be more jobs created and there'll be an industry and an ecosystem that revolves around this. Of course, we don't want to be just locally based in Kenya. We're looking to expand beyond East Africa into Sub-Saharan Africa. And if we can, why not export back to the countries where these technologies came from? Export back to India, export back to China, export back to the West. What the, the sector and the industry needs is, um, is a lot of government support. Um, government has been proactive. Um, they've, they've created some uh, laws and some uh, tax breaks around importing knockdown kits, uh, but the process of getting that onto that tax uh, bracket or that um, uh, how do you say it? to get to getting that privilege is uh, is quite tedious, and especially so in sectors where you see these these new technologies are usually being driven by young 
uh, young, the younger population in our country where resources are scarce um, and, and you know, we need that government support so that we're able to, to drive the future and be able to, make, <coughs> to, make, to, make, to bring these technologies here cheaper and make it more affordable for Kenyans and also create these industries. Without that support, you know, a lot of these industries are going to die or going to struggle to gain traction and you're going to find that they're gonna be, we're going to end up importing from the rest of the world. So right now I'd say that the key thing that this needs is one, government support and two, like what you're doing right now, creating awareness around the industry. This, is, this helps, it gets more people to understand what we're doing, what the new technologies are and I'm sure once this airs, someone will, come, will call me and be like, by the way, I've seen you, I want to try it and that's how the word spreads.